x times y uh, plus x times z, and I wanted you to factor that. Well, what you basically do is you look at this term and you look at this term and you try to find something common to both terms. So you see an x here and an x here. That's really the only thing common. So you can kind of pull that x out because it's common to both. You can open up a set of parentheses, and if you pull out an x from here, all that's left is the y, and then when you pull out the x from here, all that's left is the z. So you have uh, y plus z. The reason there's a positive sign here is because there was a positive sign here to begin with. Now you can always check this by distributing the x times y, giving you this, and the x times z, giving you x, z. So this is the, the correct factorization. So we're just pulling out what's common here. Now let's take, a, a, take it a step further and take a look at the following problem where we'll actually have to do what we call grouping. What if you had 3 times x plus y in parentheses, and then we're going to add to that z, and inside parentheses we're going to have, again, again x plus y. And I'm asking you to factor this. Now when you look at it initially, you don't really know what to do because unlike this example, you look at, you're looking for a variable or a number that's common to both terms and you, to try to pull it out. But I have a 3 here and a z here and then I have the x and the y and the x and the y and it doesn't really look like there's anything I can really pull out. Well, that's where we get to the concept of factoring by grouping. You see, you can think of this x plus y, even though it's two variables and they're joined with a positive sign, they have parentheses here. You can think of this as one term. You can kind of think of it as being grouped together. In fact, it is grouped together because you have the parentheses here. But notice you have the x plus y. This exact same term is present in the other side here, on the other side of this plus sign. So just like we pulled the x out because it was common to both of these terms, we can pull this entire enchilada out, the x plus y, because it's common here and it's also common here. So what we will then do is we'll pull out x plus y because it's a common grouped term and then open up another set of parentheses just like we did here. When we pull this out, all that we have left is the 3 and then we, when we pull it out from here, all we have left is the z. So you have 3 plus z. The reason why there is a plus sign here is just the same reason because there's a plus sign there. So this is the factored form. This is what we call factoring by grouping. So when you're factoring expressions, you're always looking for individual variables you can pull out, but basically you also want to be looking for giant grouped terms that are common to both, uh, to both larger terms there, and if you can find them, then you pull them out just like before. Now, if you want to test and see if this is right, you can think of this whole term being distributed times the 3, gives you this, and this entire term being distributed times the z, uh, giving you this term. So when you go backwards uh, using distribution, it all works out. All right. Uh, as you get more, more practice with this, you will see the pattern here. So let's say we have the variable e times f minus g. I'm sorry, f, I wrote j there. f minus g is what I'm trying to write there. Okay, and then what we have is minus 4, again, f minus g. So we look at both of these larger terms here, this one here and this one here, and we say, what's common? Well, we have an e and a 4, but we have f minus g and f minus g. So those are kind of grouped terms because they're wrapped up in parentheses and they're exactly identical. So I can pull out the f minus g, just like this, open another parentheses. When I pull it out from here, all I have left is the e. And when I pull it out from here, all I have left is the 4. But notice there's a minus sign here, so it'll be e minus 4. This is the factored form. And if you go backwards, if you take this whole thing times e, you'll get this. And if you take this whole thing times the 4, really there's a negative 4 there, then you will get this term. So going backwards, you, know, you, can, you can verify for yourself that you're getting the same thing. All right, let's cruise on down the line here and just do, uh, do some more to get you, give you some more practice. What if we have 7 times r minus s? Now, here's where they try to trick you in the books. Let's do plus t. This is a plus t. And then in here, we're going to put s minus r. So students will look at this, and they'll, they'll look for common terms. Okay, I have a 7, and I have a t. That's not common. I have an r minus s. And here I have an S minus R. These are not the same, so I really don't have anything common. So a lot of students will just cross it out and say, I can't factor this. There's nothing I can do. And at first glance, yes, that, that does seem to be the case. But any time you have two things subtracted uh, from one another, you can factor out a minus 1. You can factor out a, a negative 1 here, 
and let me just show you how to do that. Well, let me do it first, and then I'll explain why it helps you. Basically, what you need is you have an R minus S. You want to turn this into an R minus S also, so it'll match this one. The way we do that is factor out a negative 1. Let me show you. The first part is 7 times R minus S, as you would expect. The second part is T. But now I want to factor out a negative 1. You can factor anything you want uh, out of a out of a parentheses uh, like this. So we'll factor out a negative 1. What's that going to do to the inside here? What's that going to do to the inside? When I factor out the negative 1, then what I'm going to have is, what is this S going to turn into? This, this S right here, when, if I factor out a negative 1, this then has to become negative S. And then this positive R, I'm sorry, negative R is going to become a positive R like this. It's really, really important that you understand this step here. All I've done is I've taken this term and I've taken, if I were to factor out a negative 1 and pull it out, what happens to the s that's left behind? It has to be a negative s. Then if I take this negative r and factor out a negative 1, that becomes a positive r. You can check it because the negative 1 times negative s gives you positive s. The negative 1 times positive r gives you negative r. Now why are we doing all this stuff? You know, you got to have a plan, right? you got to have a reason. So let's just write this down again, r minus s. Um, now, the negative 1 here, you have a negative 1 times t, so really what you're going to have is a minus t on the outside, and on the inside of the parentheses, you'll have r minus s. Do you see what's happened here? We want to factor by grouping. So we looked originally, this guy did not have a matching uh, term over there to be able to factor out, but we know that when things are subtracted, s minus r, you can turn it into r minus s by factoring out a negative 1. And that's the punchline. I did the, all the steps here to show you how, but the bottom line is when you factor out that negative 1, you can effectively flip the order in which these things are subtracted because the s becomes negative s and the r, the negative r, becomes positive r, which lets you flip the subtraction around. So then what you have is, you can pull out the common term. You have r minus s in both places, so I can say r minus s comes out, and then I'll have 7 minus t left over, because when I pull the r minus s out from here, I'm left with a 7. When I pull the r minus s out from here, I'm left with negative t, like this. This is the final answer. So, when you have factoring by grouping going on, but the terms look really, really similar, except they're just kind of flipped in order, and they're subtracted like this, then you can do a little trick by pulling out a negative 1, making it negative out here, and effectively just flipping the order. Notice what happened. This positive turned into a negative by pulling out the negative 1. The s minus r became r minus s, which allowed me to factor it out. So that's the answer to that question. All right. Now what if we have something similar? This one looks a little similar, but it's actually easier. What if we have 2a uh, times a plus 3 minus uh, 3 plus a. And I'm looking for common terms to pull out. So what I do is I look and say, well, I have a 2a here. I really don't have anything there except a 1. I have a plus 3, and then I have 3 plus a. Well, those don't really seem the same. But then I realize, over here I have 3, 3 plus a. That's exactly the same thing. If I flip the order of these, 3 plus a is the same as a plus 3. So really, what I have is 2a times a plus 3 here minus, and I can rewrite this as a plus 3. You know, when you have 2 plus 5 is the same as 5 plus 2, so I can flip the order of this addition at will. I don't have to factor anything. I just can flip it around because addition is like that. Then I have a common term here and a common term here. So then it becomes 2a. Uh, Actually, I want to go back here and take one more thing out. What I'm going to have here, when I look for my common terms, I have an a plus 3 here and an a plus 3 here. That is what is common. So I open it up and say that's what I'm pulling out. That's what I'm factoring out. Now what happens here? Whenever I factor it out from here, I'm left with 2a right here. And what happens over here? When I factor it out from here, there's just a 1 here. So this becomes minus 1. So it's 2a minus 1. And if you want to check it, then you can kind of visualize if I take this whole thing and multiply by the 2a, I'll get this. And if I take this whole thing and multiply by the negative 1, I will get this. That's where I'm trying to go. All right. All right. So I have one more example to show you before we call it quits for factoring by grouping part 1. We'll do some more problems in the next section. But what if we have switch colors here. What if we have 2x uh, times x minus y plus y times y minus x. So again, I'm looking for common terms. I have a 2x and I have a y. That's obviously not the same. 
Here I have an x minus y and a y minus x. And remember, I showed you what you can do. You can effectively factor out a minus 1 from here, which will turn this into an x minus y. You can flip the order of the subtraction by factoring out a negative 1. So what you will have then is 2x times x minus y. And then I'll have plus y, which comes from right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out this minus 1 from here, which will then turn the y minus x into an x minus y. And the way you think about that is because if I factor out a minus 1 from here, it becomes a negative y. Well, that's what I have. And if I factor out a negative 1 from here, it becomes positive x. That's what I have. So I can flip it around to mean x minus y. The shortcut way of thinking about it is when I pull out a negative 1, you just flip the order of the subtraction. And that's what I have left here. So just to clarify it here, I have 2x times x minus y. Then I have this turning into a minus sign, y, x minus y. Right, because this negative 1, I can just make it into a subtraction. So now I have x minus y and x minus y. That is my common grouped term that I'm going to pull out, x minus y. And then what do I have left over? When I factor it out of this term, I'll just have the 2x left over. And when I factor it out of this term, I'll have the negative sign with y left over. So it'll be negative y. 2x minus y. So that's the answer, x minus y times 2x minus y. So basically, factoring by grouping, you want to look for common terms. Uh, if you need to flip the order of the addition to make a match, do that. If they already match, like they did before, then you just go ahead and factor them out. And if they're very, very close, but they're subtracted, and the order of them is just different, then you can force them to match by factoring out a minus 1 first. So make sure you understand this. Do this yourself. Follow me on to the next section. We'll get some more practice with this concept. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.